In this presentation, we'll take a look at the receive payment form. In other words, we've entered an invoice in the past. Now we're going to imagine that we're going to be receiving payment on that invoice. The invoice in the past increasing the receivable. This time now the receiving of the payment decreasing the receivable and increasing cash. Time to have some fun with Sage 50 Cloud. Customer sales page within Sage. We're in the actual version of the Sage 50, but you should be able to follow along with the demo version as well. Again, we're in the customers and sales. Last time we talked about having the invoice, the invoice increase in the accounts receivable and then increasing the sales side of things as well as dealing with inventory and so on and so forth. And then at some future point in time, of course, what's going to happen is we're going to receive payment on that inventory. So that's what we're going to go to now. We're going to go from the invoice jumping over here to the receive payment. This is going to be the receive payment form. I'm going to select the drop down. We're going to receive money from a customer. Now note that this same form can be used if we're going to receive money from a customer at the point of time of sale and, and we would use it a little bit differently or if we're receiving payment for an, in, for an invoice in the past that's currently in accounts receivable as we are doing now. So we're going to have receive money from the customer. Here's going to be the form. I'm going to make it large so we can go through this. Now it's important up top the way we have this set up there's going to be a difference if we're going to say the deposit ticket is here or is not here so this is just going to be a deposit ticket number uh let's say we're going to make a deposit in the bank and we'll assign a number for the deposit ticket then i'm going to tap through this i'm going to say there's a customer id and and again just note that that means that we actually took it to the bank and deposited it and we're going to give it a reference of that actual deposit as opposed to if we did not deposit it where we would have no deposit ticket and then possibly group it together to deposit it uh, in a grouped format. So we'll, t we'll talk about how that deposit ticket can be used and that, that grouping method. So, and we'll do that later though. <laughs> so then we're going to go to the uh, Android here again, uh, Aldred. And here's going to be our information. Let's keep continue tabbing through. I'm going to say the date I'm going to say is the 20th. So let's bring this on up to the 20th. And I'll keep tapping through here. Now the amount, it could be in a check format. And uh, the amount note, we can pick up the amount here. But we also see down below we have the applied to invoices. Now note on the right side we have applied to revenue. That would be basically if, if uh, the customer just came in and we made a sale to the customer. Then we can apply it out to an income account. However, we're going to be using this first tab. Which means that we issued an invoice and now we're going to be receiving the payment on the in invoice that had been issued. Here's now, if we wanted to see the actual invoice, we could select the invoice here. I can zoom into it. You can see the, the zoom feature here, and that'll open a new window with the invoice. You can see that it's unpaid here, so we're going to say it's unpaid. If you wanted to go to the invoice, by the way, we could go to the invoice and then say pay now uh, from the invoice. But anyways, I'm going to close this back out. And so we're going to say that we're going to pay this one off. Let's pay uh, this invoice off to follow through with this action. And so we have the check. We're going to need some type of number, typically the way we have it set it up here for us to need a reference number to enter this. Uh, the receipt number, I'm going to keep that uh, blank. We've got the amount. Note that the amount is now populating at the 40510. So we have the amount populated. We're going to say it's going to be in a check format. You can have other forms of payment, uh, including these items in the drop down. Now the account that it's going to be going to right here is the default will typically be to the checking account, right? Because we're getting a payment, we're going to say it's going to be going into the checking account. So what's this going to do when we record this? We can think about this as a receive payment form, a receive payment on an invoice. So what's going to be happening? It's going to be depositing into the bank and the other side is going to be reducing the accounts receivable account. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to save this and then I'll close this back out. And then let's take a look at our reports. So we're going to go to the reports up top. We're going to be going down to the financial statement reports. We want to take a look at, at the balance sheet. So I'm going to be opening up the balance sheet report. I'm going to put the dates. Let's keep it where, where the suggestion is, the current period, uh, from 3-1 to 3-31. I'm not going to have anything checked down below. So I'm just going to say OK. And then we'll take a look at the checking account. So we have the checking account here, the 24115. If we double click the 24115, we had a deposit on the 20th of that 405. If we were to double click on that 405, then we get back to our information here. I'm going to maximize it real quick so we can see it. And there it is checked off. So I'm going to close this back out. 
The other side then, I'm going to close this back out, is going to be into the accounts the uh, accounts receivable account. So that's going to be down here, accounts receivable, double clicking on that item. And if we scroll on down, then it's much better to have the date of just the month here. <laughs> We're going to say, there it is, there's the 413. If I double click on that, there is going to be that item once again. So closing this back out, closing this back out. Also note that the accounts receivable went down. So if I take a look at the sub ledger uh, tracking the accounts receivable by uh, by customer, it would also be going down. Now I'm going to minimize this tab so that it's going to be down here. So we've got multiple tabs open down here and then I'm going to close this tab. I don't need this tab as well. Now note that if I did receive a payment as um, and I didn't re record um, the deposit slip, that might help me for the grouping purposes. In other words, note that if I receive multiple different payments, the question is, uh, how am I going to reconcile that information? If I got multiple different payments and then I take them to the bank and I put them in the bank at one lump sum group sum, then I would like to see it clear the bank in the same way that it's in my system because that'll help me to reconcile. Now, oftentimes, if you take a look at like a QuickBooks software or something like that, one method you can use to do that is to put it into like an un, like a like an uncleared or an undeposited cash or like into just a cash holding account uh, on on hand cash account and then take it out of there and put it into the checking account transfer it into the checking account once you actually make the deposit so that you could put it into the checking account in the format that you expect it to be seen uh, on the bank statement so that it'll help you reconcile we have a, a little bit of a, a nice little feature here too the a method we can use to help us to reconcile and basically enter this into the into the deposit straight away so to see this let's go back into uh, an, another item and let's say that I didn't put a deposit ticket here and the system's going to say hey look I didn't deposit it yet but we did receive a payment and so I'm going to go then to a customer let's say a customer I'll go to uh, frost this time or golden let's go to a customer that has an outstanding item so here we go and then I'm going to go to, let's make this the 20th again. So I'll make this as of the 20th. And there is that. And then I'm going to say that we received this amount that uh, 2021-26. And I'm going to need a reference number up top. And then I'm still going to be having the checking account. Now the only difference here between these two items, the only significant difference, or the one I want to, I think one, one I want to focus in on, is that we don't have the the ticket up top. So we're going to be depositing the 198123 into the checking account. Let's go ahead and save this. And I'll save this item. And then I'm going to close this back out. And then if we go back into our uh, financials, we should see in the checking account. If we go into the checking account, double clicking on that checking account, scrolling down to the bottom, we're looking at the 20th again. There it is deposited. So if I double click on it, same kind of activity that we would expect, closing this back out, closing this back out, minimizing this report. However, if I go now into the bank deposit and I say I want to take a look at the new bank deposit information here, then notice I see this bank deposit uh, that, that's going to be showing up here. So if I group these together, I can say, hey, look, I deposited possibly this one and this one at the same point in time. So the deposits then, what I need to reconcile to possibly on the bank reconciliation is going to be this number, 2256. It's already, we already recorded it into the checking account. But we're going to say the grouping that we need for, for the bank reconciliation is the 2256. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now uh, when we think about the grouping, if I go to the banking drop down and I take a look at the view and edit the bank transactions, uh, we'll, ha we'll have the groupings that are going to be applied out in this format. So that's another way that we can, we can kind of uh, use this system to put the deposit into the bank but have the have the grouping in such a way that we can help us out with the bank reconciliation process. So in other words, if I was to select one of these deposits that were that were put in place, it would consist of multiple payments that we could have been received that we put together and grouped together uh, when we actually deposited them into the bank account. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.